Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good morning, student. <clears throat> I hope you all are safe and doing well. Okay. So, uh, as we discussed last time about the European regulatory system, EMA is the biggest health authority, highly regulated market, and uh, they. Uh, they are like 27 plus three countries okay so the whole europe comprises of almost 30 countries okay and they uh the main health authority is ema and under ema there are edqm chmp and multiple departments or uh, scientific committee working okay together so european is the biggest health authority uh, which was formed on 1st january 1995 and uh, under jurisdictions of European Union and headquartered uh, are at Amsterdam, Netherlands. Okay, so uh, I will just recap for five minutes because you have to remember about the European regulatory system before we proceed to the product variation, the product life cycle management under Europe. Okay. So, uh, under EMA organization, as I mentioned, uh, there are executive director under which there are different staff, management board and scientific committees working. So, there are mainly seven important scientific committee like CHMP, uh, like Committee for Medicinal Product for Human Use, uh, in which we will be, uh, you know, working more of because we are handling all uh, pharma industry handling medicinal products so those who are willing to work in veterinary they have to approach to cmvp okay so similarly orphan ke liye comp herbal uh, for herbal it is hmpc uh, for pediatric pdco so like that there are seven major scientific committees and this is how the ema organization looks like uh, responsibility we have discussed so any health authorities main objective is to what protect public health and uh, to maintain quality safety and efficacy of uh, all the products okay so apart from the regular uh, work they have other work like funding financial management budgetary reporting and they are a major role to implement policies and procedures okay so to get the marketing authorization we have to meet this major three requirements uh, we have discussed this several times right efficacy safety and quality uh, then we moved on to european marketing authorization procedure uh, which is centralized procedure mrp that is mutual recognition procedure then decentralized procedure that is dcp national procedure that is np okay so we started with the national procedure that means say one only one eo member state means one single application to one country okay once you get the entry into europe you can mutually recognize other countries via mrp procedure or dcp procedure so in this two procedure you have to select one country one member state as a rms that is reference member state and the other countries as a cms that is concerned member state okay then centralized procedure is one application in entire europe so like uh, like in case of emergency use uh, covid drug zika virus drug then anti aids anti cancer you know rare disease all those kind of application can be sent via centralized route so that at one shot you get the marketing approval and you can sell your product to entire europe okay so that is the difference between four system and we have discussed this in details during the last lecture so today i thought just to uh, have a recap okay so how the centralized system works we have discussed about the flow chart of each type of regulatory system okay cp then uh, you know np that is national procedure we have discussed about the timelines you know how uh, how many days uh, does it take how the clock starts how the clock stops you know so everything we have discussed during the last week lecture i hope it is pretty clear now how this four system works okay so i will just browse through then we discussed about union register in which we get all kind of information for the medicinal veterinary orphan uh, products about what 
about what whether they are uh, which product have the marketing authorization okay through the centralized procedure okay then uh, when the, this register also talks about the suspended or withdrawn or reduced uh, sorry refused uh, authorization product medicinal product that were refused nationally okay then we uh, discussed about the legal basis for the application in europe that is 83 article 83 10 1 10 3 10 4 10 b so in short here uh, it is given under which article what kind of products applications are submitted for example 10 b means fixed dose combination products are submitted okay the 83 means full or full mixed application that is complete dose here okay 10 1 article is generally used for the generic medicine okay then hybrid medicinal product 10 3 10 4 similar biologics so 10 b we have already so all these articles are part of this directives once you understand this directive 2183 ec ec means european commission eu means european union okay so under the european union uh, this article you know these article numbers are very important which are mentioned under this directive okay so being a regulatory professional you have to understand all the articles you know applicability to the particular type of application so we have discussed each article during last week okay abridged application then generic application hybrid biosimilars okay and uh, these are the references if you want to further explore uh, on this topic you can easily browse through it then we uh, discussed about the ICH M4 that is CTD so all the application whether it is IND, NDA, NDA, BLA or generic applications are sent to health authority by what CTD format by using CTD format so ICHM4 talks about the CTD format, not only the CTD format, how it is organized in module 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what are the uh, fonts are used, how the left margin, right margin, what kind of paper, what kind of um, clinical, non-clinical data, summaries, you know, overall organization and uh, everything is mentioned under these guidelines. So these guidelines are such a beautifully written guidelines. One should read it thoroughly and understand. Because whenever you will be working in regulatory affairs, day in, day night, you will be preparing the dossier, okay, in the CTD, ECTD format, and in which this all the tips given under this guidance are very helpful. Trust me, very helpful. So we discussed about the organization, module one, module two, Module 3, 4, and 5, in which Module 2 is a quality oral summary of Module 3, 4, and 5. Okay. When we talk about why Module 1 is not part of CTD, your answer should be like it is it comprises of regional administrative information. Okay, that is why it is not harmonized and it is not part of CTD. CTD is what harmonized structure. It is a common technical document. All other format is common, okay? Whether module one, two, three, four, five, as per ICH organization. But this is not common. And that is why it is called not part of the CTD. And this is part of the CTD, okay? Module two, three, four, five. Then we discussed each module in detail, okay? So module one example also we have covered like application form, mock label, PIL, all these goes as per regional specific. Say for example, if I want to register my product in Japan, so I have to give all the label leaflet and all the administrative information in Japanese language. Tomorrow I have to go to Russia or Saudi Arabia, so Arabic. So like that, each country has their own country specific requirement and which is uh, administrative and the prescribing information goes under module one. 
okay module 2 talks about the quality overall summaries of what module 3 4 and 5 in which quality oral summary of non clinical summary non clinical overview then clinical summary clinical overviews everything goes under this section okay when we talk about non clinical it talks about the preclinical data of what animal study the pharmacology pharmacokinetics and toxicology studies being conducted in animal and that's why we have to give under the 2.6 section non clinical return and tabulated summaries with respect to pharmacology pharmacokinetics and toxicology whereas 2.7 section talks about the clinical summary wherein we conduct human trials right the clinical studies in human so which gives the biopharmaceutical studies and associated analytical methods clinical pharmacological studies clinical efficacy and safety data understood and what else literature references synopsis of individual studies so while doing these studies you you can use the published literature you know through scientific journal pubmed or any reliable sources then model 3 discuss about uh, you know uh, what the body of data means model 3 discuss about the quality part quality of what body of data means it talks about the drug substance and the drug product okay module 4 again non clinical study report module 5 clinical study report okay and then we have discussed about the granularity how the granularity is maintained when we talk about ctd and ctd is converted to e ctd by using software okay see to that all softwares used for the regulatory submissions are 21 CFR part 11 compliant okay so how you maintain the granularity right from the beginning in the tetra zero like when you submit the original application it is called 0000, 000, 000, 000 means tetra zero okay you can start the sequence from 0001 also okay but the next version when you are going to submit as an annual report or uh, any version uh, with respect to changes okay when you maintain the product life cycle management then it goes as a triple zero one so today i'm going to show how this organization looks like how the granularity is maintained okay so this granularity uh, i have discussed during last lecture how the module 2 looks like how it is divided, subdivided, you know, broken into small, small parts, small documents. So if we call this as a main folder, module 2, then under module 2, there will be these are the subfolders. Then the sub subfolder under 2.3, again, you will see there is 2.3 S, 2.3 P, 2.3 A and 2.3 R. Under S, again, there is S1 to S7. Under P means product s means substance p1 uh, p product is p12 p8 okay so that means if you understand what kind of documentation required to submit under each folder this organization is harmonized you know these common technical documents given under the ich organization is very much harmonized in us europe and japan okay so when we talk about the organization and the granularity and how it has to be submitted then one should understand that every document you know should be numbered starting at the page one what does it mean always we give the uh, pagination as one of x of y means one of 10 two of 10 and last will be 10 of 10 because we are attaching different kind of document like specification, test procedure, validation, stability report, you know, container closure system. We talk about n number of documents which goes under this granularity. Am I right? When we talk about clinical study reports, which goes under, you know, the non-clinical goes under module 4 and the clinical goes under module 5. Okay. So when I am going to share this presentation, you have to read about the note. You know, the right hand side, I have given the key, you know, what kind of documents, what kind of, what level of granularity you have to define. 
during your submission. So you will understand the legend used for yellow, purple, and green. And the note given under, so if you see under 5.3.5, note 2 is given. So you should read note 2. What is it? So for application in support of more than one indication, this section should be repeated for each indication. What does it mean? Suppose if there are two indication, I have given one example like aspirin. Okay, it has two indication. It is used as an antiparatic and analgesic as well as blood thinning. Okay, and you have uh, studied for the two indication. Then you can repeat this section. Okay, you can give the naming convention as you know one, two, three, four, and you can add those many documents on which you must have. Uh, perform the studies okay so this this is the way how the granularity uh, has to be uh, done then uh, one more example i would like to quote here uh, in the 3 2 s part s means the substance drug substance part suppose if i have a one document called analytical procedure and which is a bulky document okay which has 150 pages and um, uh, our IC specification says the file size should be minimum, you know, up to say, for example, 50 MB. And our file size goes uh, up to 150 MB. Then it is ideally we have to divide into three parts. Okay. Then you have to mention that analytical procedure under, you know, under one tab as procedure A, then procedure B, procedure C. And you have to give the pagination. Suppose one of 50. Okay, 1 of 50, then 51 of what? 51 to 100, then 101 to 150. So like that, you can break your document into three parts and attach. So the granularity will be maintained. The hierarchy of that particular folder will be maintained and the proper uh, file naming convention to be used. Okay how you present your data how you give the name to each file that depends on you because see everything depends on you and your reviewer reviewer sitting at usfda or ema is going to you know review your document and if you make him very comfortable if you make your document very user friendly then only there are chances to get the marketing approval easily or the faster i would say and that's the reason how granular you make the document how naming convention uh, you are using for the document and how you attach to this organization it depends on you so the, the skill sets are required secondly the quality oral summary how it has to be written you know that also skills required so usually medical writers uh, and consultants like us are used to write the quality oral summary because see each reviewer will pick up the quality oral summary because all module like he, he doesn't have so much time to go through entire module which module one two three four five which is comprising of thousands and thousands of documents so what the reviewer will do first he to understand your product he will pick up the qos quality oral summary how it was written how the non-clinical data is presented how the clinical data is presented okay so that justification how you have given how you have summarized so that he will see and he will feel like to enter into other uh, section and you know thorough, thoroughly review so quality oral summary generally uh, written, uh, you know, uh, in 40 pages apart from your uh, uh, tables and, you know, uh, other part of the list for the medicinal product. And uh, for biotech product, it should not be more than 80 pages. Okay. So with this, I have uh, covered ICHM4, you know, CTD. Module 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, Module 3, 4, 5, we have covered earlier also when we talk about ASMF or DMF. Only Module 1, 2, 3 will uh, go in which S part, that is the drug substance part, ideally submitted. When we talk about ANDA, BLA or any or NDA, sorry. 
then module 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goes. In case of NDA, all modules are required. In case of BLA, all modules are required. Whereas in case of ANDA, module 4 and 5 is replaced with the BAB data, that is bioequivalence study. Okay. So these, uh, these things you have to remember well. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to show you uh, how actually uh, this organization uh, looks like, you know. Uh, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so you can see this Tetra Zero? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is how you have to prepare your module, okay, the uh, CTD. So this is a CTD dossier, okay, in which the first original application is Tetra Zero, under which you have to make module 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. So under module 1, then again you have to maintain the hierarchy, the granularity, which is mentioned as per ICH, okay. So under module 1, there is form, cover letter, administrative information. So all these documents will go inside this folder, okay. So you will see the main folder is this, then the subfolder and then the sub subfolder. So under regional, whatever documents you are providing will go under the regional. Then module two, module two talks about the quality overall summary under which module two again divided into 2.1, 2.2, 3, 4, 5, correct, 6, 7. So like that you have to submit the you know, uh, urbanization, like uh, submit the document as per the organization of CTD. So I hope it is pretty clear quality module. Now under quality module 3, there is body of data and the literature, sub, uh, you know, the literature and what references. So here uh, under body of data, you can see there are four subfolders which talks about 3 to P, that is drug product, 3 to S, that is drug substance, 3 to R is original information, 3 to A is appendices. So 3 to P means drug product. So I, as I mentioned earlier, under drug product, P1, P2, P3, P4, up to P8, okay? So P1 talks about uh, composition of your product, then P2 talks about the pharmaceutical document, you know, development report, then, um, P3 manufacture, P4 control of excipient, P5 control of duct product, P6 reference standard or material used, P7 container closure system, P8 talks about the stability, correct? So you have to remember under P8, again P8.1, 8.2, 8.3. So how much granular it is you can see, okay? So this is the way how the dossier is prepared. Again, you see uh, under quality, I'm going through body of data, drug product I have already shown to you, drug substance. How the drug substance, S1, S2, S3. So we provide information relevant to API. And that's the reason I said earlier that whenever you submit ASMF, CEP or DMF, you have to provide data relevant to S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7. What is S1? S1 means general information about your drug substance. What is S2? S2 means manufacture of your drug substance. Under the manufacture, you have to give the description, manufacturing procedure, how you are using, what kind of material, how you control, what are the critical steps, how the process validation, uh, is done and how you you develop your manufacturing process so all these documents are attached to the respective folder okay and all the documents submitted under each section has to be in the pdf format okay so understood general information manufacture characterization control of drug substance reference standard container closure system stability and under each this each of this folder you will see there are 
other subfolders in which you have to attach those PDF documents. Now I will show one dossier which was submitted to health authority. Okay. Now this is vitamin D we have submitted to health authority. Say for example, this is this was my dossier and this was my model. Okay. Suppose this is this is this was submitted to SFDA. SFDA means Saudi Arabian FDA. So you can see uh, when I had given the cover letter to Saudi Arabia, I will see to that it is a regional specific requirement. So how it will look like? Regional specific means Saudi Arabia asks to submit in Arabic language. Am I right? And that's the reason this is the letter which I have submitted in Arabic language. Okay. Now I move on to the next folder. Form. Now the submission form. Okay. Saudi Arabian form. So I have submitted this form. Okay. As per the Saudi Arabian requirement. Similarly, all the documents if you see in the module, like module 2, I have given the summary. Okay. Non-clinical summary, clinical overview. I cannot show each and every document because this is a submitted dossier which is confidential. Okay. So I will just browse through. So how the document looks like, how the dossier is submitted, how the PDFs and other documents are attached. Okay. So that's the reason you have to you have to submit all the dossier into this CTD format. Okay. So you have seen the actual dossier, how it has to be submitted. Correct. Module 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't know. Then uh, module 5. Uh, and when we submit this dossier as a what? CTD or ECTD format, you will see three other folder like utility folder, index.xma and index md 5 checksum. Okay. So when we go to index, so uh, I don't know whether the it will be open as an index because I wanted to show you at a, as a HTML that is XML backbone. Because entire CTD is converted as a XML backbone that, like this. Okay. So whenever reviewer click any button, like you can see uh, all the document, like see regional information, quality overall summary. These all our documents are hyperlinked. So when I go to there and uh, click, so all the information is available at a single click button. You can see such a big XML backbone is generated out of your ECTD software. Okay. And that is why electronic submission has become very, very popular nowadays. And it has become mandatory also. So all health authority like US, Europe, Japan, Canada, and many of other countries are asking uh, us to submit dossier into ECTD format. That is the advantage because reviewers time is saved. Each information is available with the single click button. Okay. And uh, I hope it is pretty clear now how the organization of CTD looks like actual me. Understood. Then suppose when I have to update when next year I have to give the product life cycle management under product life cycle management. I have submitted this original uh okay uh, dossier then i have to submit the revised document so whatever i have revised i have to send module one okay and module three suppose if i have uh, submitted some stability data or as per the query uh, suppose they have asked some queries that this this data is missing or if i have updated stability report after post approval Okay, then I have to submit those many documents and I have to give the summary of that. Understood? So the next time when, uh, next year when it is updated, the sequence will be like triple zero one and a original will be tetra zero. Okay. Suppose next to next year again, I'm submitting with the changes. Then again, what will happen? Triple zero two triple zero three triple so like that my folders will be generated and i will keep track of it okay which data was submitted in uh, original application and later on what are the changes 
I have maintained that that is, uh, you know, that those sub, uh, I mean, those <coughs> folders you have to maintain, those sequence you have to maintain. Now it is clear how this uh, uh, marketing authorization or the dossiers are prepared and uh, submitted to different health authority. Say yes or no. Hello. Have you understood how this CTD is organized? How the granularity is maintained? Yes, ma'am. It's pretty clear. Okay. So thank you for your attention and uh, now I will move on to next session that is product life cycle management. As per the European system, it is called European variation. Okay. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is the uh, presentation prepared uh, by my colleague Sachin and uh, it talks about the post approval life cycle management of pharmaceutical products in Europe. Okay. So each product, you know, each product has to maintain their life cycle. Correct. How I have shown like we have submitted one application say for example last year okay we for which I have given the sequence number tetra zero because it is it was submitted to Europe and as for European standard it was mandatory requirement to submit in ECTD format correct now next year like suppose one year I have completed and couple of queries I have received at the same time when I have submitted the original application only six month accelerated stability data was available and I have sent it to health authority correct right? but now I have one year data right additional one year I have conducted six month plus one year how many months 12 plus 6 18 months now I have 18 months stability data correct right? for the real time so it is my duty to update inform fda or the ema that i have 18 months stability data plus suppose if i have some changes in the specification or any any kind of changes which i have to notify to edq sorry europe then what happened it is called post approval you know the life cycle management so in this presentation we are going to discuss about registration of pharmaceutical product in europe we have already discussed correct but introduction of product life cycle management for the pharmaceutical product in europe under which eu variation application what is the concept of variation how the variations are classified what are the different types of variations okay so definition each type of variation fundamental concept and examples then the documentation required for variation filing grouping of variation timeline of variation then there is a term called eu renewal application okay what is the meaning of renewal renewal submission timelines and takeaway message so all these points we will be discussing okay so eu as a market for pharmaceutical industries i have mentioned several times there are 27 member states in european union plus there are three additional ifta states okay european federal trade association ifta okay so those are the three countries like iceland Liechtenstein, and norway and that's the reason total 30 countries or member states of Europe. It is always called. But each country has their own, you know, national, regional 
specification and regional requirement. As I mentioned during my Europe lecture, that if you want to go to Germany, not go to apply to Germany, you have to translate module one into German language to France, French language, like that. So you have to maintain country specific, regional specific requirement. Okay. So legal basis for all different application also we have discussed if you recollect under directive 2001, right? 8.3 article, 10.1 article, 10.B, correct? 10.3 and 10.4. So we have discussed those abridged application and you know, the combination product and everything we have discussed. So similarly, uh, under uh, variation also there are legal basis, you know, how you compile the dossier for different types of variations like type 1a 1b we'll come to that this also we have discussed about the uh, <clears throat> you know uh, what you say uh, the ctd organization model 1 2 3 4 5 correct how the data is generated compiled and submitted by using this organization correct how the granularity is maintained we have covered this legal basis, correct? Now we talk about the post approval life cycle management. So these are the common term, you know, when we talk about the post approval, means after approval, how you maintain your license, how you maintain your product in market, correct? Like I will give one example of Sandoz, calcium, calcium Sandoz. Okay, it's a very old 60 years brand, still it is existing. How? Because they keep on renewing the application, they keep on making changes as per the customer requirement, correct? So they maintain all the, uh, the pharmacovigilance system and other uh, you know, requirement as per the rules and regulations, correct? They keep on renewing, so the renewal, variation, Pharmacovigilance, these are the three requirements. These are the three basis for submission wherein you can maintain your product years and years altogether. Okay. So, what is variation? Under Europe, it is a common terminology used that is variation. What is variation? Okay. Variation means as per annexation. Annex 1, Annex 1, we can speak about, that is extension of marketing authorization. Annex 2, it's classification of variation. Annex 3, wherein couple of variation you can group in. Okay. Annex 4 means elements to be submitted. Annex 5 means variations concerning a change or addition of therapeutic indication. Okay, addition of non-food producing target species or replacement or addition of stereotype strain. So don't get confused. Slowly, slowly, we will move forward. Because once you understand what is variation, okay, variation is an amendment, okay? It's an amendment to the content of the documents of approved dossier. So once you get the approval for your submitted dossier, in our case, suppose Tetra 0, that is 000, original application, you have submitted to EMA via any route, DCP, MR, PCP, you get the marketing authorization, that is approval. But after that, if you want to amend, okay, so variation is nothing but it is an amendment to your marketing authorization application with respect to what? The contents of the documents of approved dossier. Okay. So, European Variation Guidelines, such a beautifully written. Uh, you can take this uh, guidelines. You can download yourself or we will share with you. This is the guideline, okay, which was published in 2013, but still it is applicable. So what type of variation uh, you want to submit? It is the based on 
always administrative changes or CMC that is chemistry manufacturing uh, control with respect to quality changes or safety efficacy and pharmacovigilance changes. Okay, so these are the three types of changes generally happen in case of your product life cycle. Correct. So variation are broadly classified into minor variation and major variation. So under minor variation, there are type 1A and type 1B. Under major, it is type 2. So remember, minor variations are subclassified as 1A, 1B. And major, it is only type 2. Okay. Again, if you ask me type 1A, okay, 1A, 1B. So under 1A also, there is, you know, 1A in. That is immediate notify. So these are the types of variation, okay, as per EU variation guideline. I will repeat, as per EU variation guideline, which was published in 2013, there are mainly two variation, minor and major. Major is type 2 only, but minor are divided into 1A, 1B. Okay, and there is third variation that is extension application that is also called as variation. Okay, so let us focus on one by one type 1a variation. Okay, so type 1a, as I mentioned, it comes under minor variation and which have only a minimal impact or no impact at all on your quality, safety efficacy of the medicinal product and do not require prior approval before implementation you have to just do and tell procedure one name is what do and tell you need not to go for prior approval correct so such a minor variation again it is subclassified into two that is type 1a variation 1a in that is requiring immediate notification and type 1a variation not requiring immediate notification that is 1a understood 1a is divided into 1a in okay i n you can see that is requiring immediate notification and this does not require immediate notification so we have brought some examples under 1A when you can apply for 1A variation. Okay. Because it has minimal impact. Correct. It is like a negligible impact on your quality safety efficacy. But what kind of? When you have to understand. When you are divided 1A in means immediate notification and 1A variation. Then you have to specifically understand you know what kind of examples we can consider under these two types of application under minor changes correct so simple change in name or address for the marketing authorization holder or change in name or address of manufacturer importer of finished product correct or maybe change in imprints bossing or other my markings of the finished product change in the shape of dimension of the pharmaceutical from particular immediate release to capsules or changes in the composition like excipients of the finished product changes in the components like addition or deletion of replacement of the flavoring or coloring agent okay so these are the immediate not variation which you can do and tell okay do and tell procedure then one a Tightening of specification limits. Say, for example, earlier impurity limits uh, were like 1% of unknown impurities. Now you have tightened up to 0.5% of label claim. Okay. So that kind of tightening of specification can go under type 1A variation. Then addition of a new specification parameters to the specification with its corresponding test methods. If you are adding any additional specification parameter, like suppose microbial limit test, you 
have not added earlier, but due to the latest guidelines, you are going to add MLT. Then they, that is called addition of new specification parameter. Then deletion of non-significant specification parameter, like some uh, tests are becoming you know obsolete, like order or taste or identification taste for a coloring flavoring material. So those kind of deletion can happen in your specification and you can capture under one a application then changes in the batch size okay the finished product like up to 10 fold compared to the originally approved batch size then you the basic concept i will ask okay Why certain minor variation of type 1A require immediate notification? Correct? Why there is a need of immediate notification? So answer is what? Certain minor variation of type 1A require immediate notification after implementation in order to ensure the continuous supervision of the medicinal product by health authorities. Correct? Because health authority is continuously supervising your product. And that's why, you know, you have to go under this immediate notification. Then why type 1A invariation should be submitted? Correct? Why you have to notify and why you also submit? So this should be submitted immediately and generally within two weeks of the implementation of the change. That you have implemented, correct? You have notified also and you have implemented. Do and tell. Correct. So, what is the documented evidence that you have implemented? So, you have to do and tell to health authority that look, this is the document. Say, for example, specification change or limit tightening. So, those kind of document you have to submit. Then, what is meant by implementation for type 1A variation? So for quality changes, implementation is when the company makes the change in its own quality system. And this interpretation allows company to manufacture conformance batches and generate any needed stability studies to support type 1A in variation before making an immediate notification because the change will not be made in their own quality system until these data are available. Of course, correct. So implementation means what? When you make actual changes in your own quality system, correct? And uh, uh, when you make the actual changes to uh, meet the you know compliance system, the conformity system, then only you can support to this 1A variation. Again, one example is given, you know, the type 1A in for addition, deletion or replacement of components in the flavoring or coloring system requires stability data. Correct. So when you are changing, you know, the deleting the uh, uh, or replacing the component for the flavoring and coloring agent, then you have to see that after changing this color, does it affect the quality of your product? How you can uh, prove by performing stability studies? Correct. Whether after changing, uh, replacing the color component, whether it affects my quality or any any tablet syrup, you know, that you have to give at least two pilot scale or industrial scale batches. So you have to do, take the batches with the changed ingredient, the replaced ingredient and perform stability studies and provide the data. Okay. So that is how it comes under implementation. And for product information, it is when the company internally approves the revised product information and the revised product information will then be used in the next packaging run. So understood, these are the basic concept we are going to clear. So I, I hope type 1A that is minor variation is pretty clear now and under 1A, what is the meaning of 1A in that is immediate and 1A, okay. Now we come to 1B. 1B variation means what? Under the European Commission regulation, what it defines a minor variation of type 1B 
which is neither a type 1a variation nor type 2 variation nor an extension. Correct? So understand the definition as per the law, as per the directives that 1b means what? It is neither type 1a variation nor type 2 variation nor an extension. <laughs> So such minor variation must be notified to the National Competent Authority or EMA by the Marketing Authorization Holder, MAH, before implementation. Okay. So it is not similar to 1A in. That is, that is what? 1A in means what? Immediate. Iklaya. Lecture made, lecture made. So you have to intimate and what you have to say? Such minor variation must be notified to the National Competent Authority and what? Before implementation. What? Before implementation. So however, the marketing authorization holder has to wait for 30 days to ensure that the notification is acceptable by the agency before implementing the change. That means tail wait and do the procedure okay so this is how this type b variation works are you clear guys are you clear with this so what is the difference between type 1a and 1b variation i hope it is pretty clear so you have to tell wait and then the so before implementation only you have to take the permission i mean you have to intimate to the ema okay then we will consider the examples of type 1b variation that is minimum to moderate impact on product quality that is tail, wait and do the procedure. What is it? Tail, wait and do the procedure. What are the examples? Replacement or addition of a manufacturing site for part or all of the manufacturing process of the finished product. Okay. That means what replacement or addition of manufacturing site for part of all the manufacturing process of finished product. So suppose if your site which is already registered during your in initial application, now you want to change that site. Okay. Or any of the manufacturing operation you have to change to the different site. Then you can go through this type 1B variation. In certain cases, you have to extend the shelf life of the finished product or as a package for sale. Then you have to perform real-time studies, stability studies and give the report. Then if there are changes in the pack size of the finished product, okay, change outside the range of currently approved pack sizes. Then the changes in type of container or addition of a new container for solid, semi-solid or non-sterile liquid pharmaceutical product. So in these four type of typical changes, you can go through type 1B changes, which has minimum to moderate impact on product quality. Okay. So have you understood the difference? Do and tail and then tail, wait and do procedure. Then come to third variation that is type 2 variation. Okay. So as per the definition, what is it? Type 2 variation is what? Which is not an extension and which may have a significant impact on your quality, safety and efficacy of medicinal product. That is why it is considered as a major variation. Okay. Sometimes it becomes very critical. Because it has impact on your quality, safety or efficacy. Am I right? And that's the reason uh, type 2 variations are very challenging to handle. It's very costly affair also. Okay. So what are the example? In case, suppose if you are adding alternatives API, or you altogether you are changing your API with the new API or new API DMF supplier or you are widening your approved specification 
or major changes in your approved manufacturing process of finished product correct then major change in approved composition of the finished product so you are changing your composition with one or two new ingredient or you are changing your active pharmaceutical ingredient correct with the new supplier so all in case of all these four cases you can go for the type 2 variation then it is extension application okay extension means what changes to the marketing authorization listed in annex 1 of ec regulation 1234 2008 it is regarded as extension of the marketing authorization when it happens for example changes to the active substance okay so replacement of a chemical active substance by different salt ester or derivatives with the same therapeutic moiety where the efficacy safety characteristic are not significantly different i had quoted one example remember suppose if you are changing amlodipin bisalate with amlodipin maleate okay that is replacement of chemical active substance with the similar kind of uh, active substance wherein there is no significant uh, change in efficacy and safety in that case you can go for extension of application okay then change to strain or the pharmaceutical form or the route of administration correct suppose if you are changing from 500 mg to 650 mg so you have to perform of course uh, uh, bioavailability uh, studies and all with this change in dose you can you know whether the patient is getting the same benefits out of you know whether the benefit versus risk ratio is minimum or maximum that you have to evaluate so in such cases you can ask for the extension okay then sometime root of administration like if you <coughs> you, are, you are going from uh, parental root to you know again for the tablet that is oral root or from oral to parental in that case also you can ask for the extension dosage form like tablet to capsule or maybe tablet to syrup you can go for then changes in bioavailability study pharmacokinetics rate of release new strength or new potency correct then change or addition of new pharmaceutical form or new route of admission this we have discussed so in all these four five cases you can go with the extension application okay then such application will be evaluated in accordance with the same procedure as for the granting of initial marketing authorization to which it relates okay so you have submitted theta zero that is original application again you are submitting triple zero one under this type two variation so it will be evaluated based on the previous data also okay granting the initial marketing authorization then the extension can either be granted as a new marketing authorization or will be included in the initial marketing authorization to which it relates so it depends on health authority depends on your uh, data provided your application submitted and how you have justified okay you can you may get as a new marketing authorization or the similar way for the same product which you already submitted okay so the evaluation procedure adapted to the level of risk okay so EMA, EMA that is European Medicinal Agency can evaluate based on the risk right that how those changes are affecting your quality safety and efficacy correct so the evaluation uh, lab, uh, is always done with respect to what benefits versus risk ratio to the patient am i right benefit versus the risk if it, the risk is more then what happens it requires for prior approval say for example now same type 1a type 1b type 2 and extension 
so in case of type 1b type 2 extension tail wait and do so these are at higher risk am i right these are at higher risk because it may affect the quality efficacy and and what quality safety and efficacy of your products and that's why such type of variation needs a prior approval correct so whatever changes you are going to make in this in your product and you are changing uh, you are applying through this type 2 or type 1b or extension application then you need a prior approval and that's the reason tail wait and do concept is applied here whereas in case of minor changes you can do and tell right so type 1a that is 1a in or 1a you need not to go for prior approval because there is a low risk okay so this slide shows about the level of risk involved in different type of variation understood now we continue with the grouping of variation okay grouping of variation so sometimes we have a question right is it possible to group variation of different categories the same marketing authorization and submit them in one submission under a single application form to the same relevant authority this is permissible where variation are covered under the cases listed as per annex 3 to the variation regulation okay so what i mean to say here as for annex 3 there are some cases in which you can go for the grouping of variation for similar kind of submission and under the single application okay so examples are any group of 1a changes a group comprising a type 1b or type 2 changes plus one or more of the same or lower category which are consequential to the first and a group of administrative changes to the labeling okay so the 14 cases of grouping listed in annex 3 of ec regulation that is 13 one two three four two thousand eight okay and you can refer to question and answer for the grouping variation uh, it is uh, very nicely uh, given under ema then there is a cmdh guidance examples are also given uh, for the acceptable and non-acceptable grouping for mr pdcp products okay so you can refer to these documents um and uh, further you know if you have still queries or uh, in your mind you can clarify uh, your doubts and if a projected group is not listed in annex 3 the regulation and supporting guidances permit the ma marketing authorization holder to request agreement of the relevant authorities to grouping of related changes where a single data package and evaluation are meaningful okay so you have to note that uh, you know where this group of variation uh, is required and how it is it has to be uh, submitted or handled you know so it has to be handled as per the highest variation type included in the group say for example type 1a plus type 1a so group could be type 1a but type 1a and type 1b so highest variation is what group will be 1b and if you group 1a 1b and type 2 then it could be type 2 okay so always you have to go for the highest variation when you buy one plus one you know uh, if you buy two products and third one be free the how how they consider that they consider the highest price out of three correct when you go for the sale that one product is free on Two, but they go for the highest price of that one of the product so similarly in case of grouping also you have to see which is the most critical right and that's how you can group in otherwise you can single single apply then we uh, discuss about the what kind of documentation required for the variation filing okay 
the first thing uh, i have shown also practically the cover letter right cover letter is very important even if you send your resume you have to send your cover letter correct so similarly whenever you are sending your application to any health authority you have to have cover letter okay then you have to attach a completed eu variation application form so you can download application form 1a 1 you know 1b whichever respective variation you are supposed to apply for you have to complete that application then the confirmation that the relevant fees have been paid as required by health authority so you have to attach proof of payment okay then a copy of relevant pages of variation classification guideline correct so why you are classifying your variation under type 2 or type 1a or 1b that particular guidance classification page you have to scan and you have to attach okay then the amendments of the relevant section of the dossier right suppose i have shown you in the tetra 0 001 we have changed the stability data and one more document right so those many documents whichever you are amending like specification you are change then the specification so relevant section of the dossier as per your ctd granularity you can attach then any additional supporting data to the proposed variation suppose by that time you have finished with 18 months or 24 months stability data you can attach that data also okay that document or any supporting data relevant to any test performed correct then an update or addendum to the quality summaries non clinical overviews and clinical overviews as relevant if at all it is relevant about non clinical clinical summaries you can update module 2 also okay suppose in any case you are updating module 3 or module 4 or 5 so with respect to that you have to update your qos quality oral summary also okay so respective documents i mean changed version you can attach to respective folders as per ctd granularity and in case that the variation affects the summary of product characteristic summary of character product characteristic labeling or package leaflet the revised product information presented in the appropriate format as well as the relevant translation as i said spc label leaflet it goes as per regional specific requirement so you have to get translated into local language okay then where the overall design and readability of the outer and immediate packaging or package leaflet is affected mock ups or specimen should be provided to the health authority okay so this is how the submission of variation application uh, for the registration of pharmaceutical product happens okay so suppose if you are using national procedure okay so it goes to what via ncs right authorization by the national competent authority that is single uh, member state okay so the submission of variation application of registered pharmaceutical then mutual uh, dcp or the um, uh, mrp as i mentioned earlier you have to select one country as your rms and multiple as your cms correct so this is authorization by several member states based on the assessment by reference member state then centralized also we have spoke right authorized by entire european commission ema right based on the assessment of ema and valid in all member states that is 30 european countries correct so what is the registration procedure versus variation procedure difference so in national application individual countries very under variation national variation application procedure under mrp dcp it is mrp whereas in centralized procedure <coughs> centralized pretty simple so under mrp dcp it goes through 
MRP, okay, variation. Under national, it is national only. Centralized is centralized variation only. So that is the difference between registration procedure and variation procedure. And under European uh, regulatory system, we have discussed this. What is national? What is MRP, DCP, and centralized procedure? Correct? Then we come to the timelines for type 1A. Correct? So the notification of receipt letter uh, will be issued by the NCA or EMA generally within five days of receipt of one A application. And within 30 days of receipt, the notification will be reviewed. And the NCA or EMA will check the correction of what application form and ensure the required documentation is present and compliance with the required condition. So the outcome of the process is what an approval or the refusal would be communicated to MAH via email. Okay, so the marketing authorization holder will be communicated by the SEMA. Okay, or they can post on the portal. So simply uh, 30 days are required, like zero day you uh, they receive the type 1A variation, day 1 start the clock. Okay, and by day 30 you get the acknowledgement of acceptance or refusal. If it is refused, then you have to resubmit. So there will be no interaction of NC or EMA with the marketing authorization holder during this procedure and no request to provide missing information. Okay, directly you can get either accepted or refused. So type 1A notification is what do and tell procedure. Therefore, changes must be implemented prior to submission of the notification. Then type uh, 1A variation through MRP DCP. Zero day, it starts, okay, RM is the reference member state uh, uh, starts the procedure and complete the CTS uh, period and CMS are only informed via CTS where there will be no additional email, okay. So, uh, until 30 days, the RMS checks if the notification can be accepted and the CMS only checks if the notification has been received and if the fees has been paid as appropriate. And on day 30, the RMS will inform to MMH on behalf of CMS of the outcome of variation. So here also uh, type 1A M, uh, variation what 30 days are required. Okay. Type 1B, <coughs> this is purely national procedure or centralized procedure. So NCA or EMA will check within seven calendar days whether the proposed change can be considered as a minor variation of type 1B and whether the notification is correct and complete okay that means validation of your dossier happens before the start of evaluation procedure then the substantive assessment is done within 30 days and leads either to approval or a request for further information later within that 30 days so the company's response to rfi letter is what received 30 days correct rfi is request for information and assessment of that as response is within further 30 days. That means 60 days. Okay. So for type 1B, it is required 60 days. And as I'm like, so type 1B requires 60 days. So type 1B submission is MH. Uh, so here uh, you can see uh, the MRB or uh, DCP procedure. So day 0 to day 30 you can see how uh, the clock works okay you can read it later on i'm going to share this slide but try to understand the procedure for under each variation you know how the uh, clock starts and how they review you know the rms cms how the assessment report is provided and then it is collectively reviewed okay when the clock starts when the clock stops okay so entire procedure is given under uh, you know uh, this chart so so this is we have covered in this way type 1a 1b you know 1a i in now we move to the type 2 variation okay so type 2 variation a purely national procedure or the centralized procedure okay which follow a 30 day that is reduced timetable 60 day standard timetable or 90 day procedure extended complex timetable 
depending upon the complexity of the variation application. Correct. So here also uh, you can see uh, within 30 days what all activities happens. Okay. With our NCA and EMA. And 90 days, you know, what can happen. And 120 day procedure. So there are in short to handle type 2 variation, there are three types of you know, a procedure depending on the complexity of the variation application. Okay. So we don't know what kind of variation you are going for. Right. And that's the reason, uh, you know, all, once you submit all the documents under uh, this uh, type 2 variation, it takes 22 days to 60 days or 90 days to assess your application. Okay. Depending on again how it is urgent or how it is complex, and that's the reason these are the stages uh, mentioned. That is, start the assessment. That is, clock is on on day zero. In all cases, assessment done during day twenty two, approved, refused, or withdrawn, or procedure finalized. Right? Or, or you may get request for further information. Correct. And if they uh, send you RFI, then the clock stops. Correct. Then the clock stops. Then you have to give the amended application for application for the RFI step. So timeline, time scale of the receipt of response after 21 days, you know, 10 days is given. And then after by the 30th days, the response received clock starts okay on completion of processing excluding clock of time okay so it's a bit don't get confused i mean to say it's uh, uh, pretty clear this chart is mentioned uh, how it happens depending on the uh, complexity of your product application and depending on how urgent it is okay but uh, final uh, finally the decision maker is EMA only, okay, NC and EMA. They will decide whether uh, you, are, you have to give the approval within 30 days procedure, 90 days procedure, or 120 days procedure, okay? So, again, type 2 variation under MRP-DCP. This, this is for centralized procedure. This is for MRP-DCP. So, for MRP-DCP, within 90 days, uh, you get the approval. So if you see uh, on the right hand side, same procedure uh, I have described, okay, how the clock starts, how the clock stops, you know, how much time you get in between, you know, so you can read this in your mind. When you, once you submit uh, the application variation to RMS, CMS, okay, then uh, how it is started, like start the procedure, RMS notifies timetable to CMS, then RMS circulates to PVR, to the CMS, correct? And then CMS send the possible comments to PVR, to the RMS. So if you don't understand anything, let us discuss at the end of the session, if anything is not clear to you. So we have reached uh, on, uh, you know, the last submission that is EU renewal application and submission timeline. So once you get the approval uh, for the marketing authorization, it is valid for five years. Okay. And it is renewable upon application by the marketing authorization holder. So once renewed, the marketing authorization will be valid for an unlimited period. Okay, this we spoke uh, during our CEP ASMF submission also. Okay. <coughs> so initially you get five years. Then once you renew, then unlimited period, you get the marketing authorization. But it will be decided by the competent authority on the justified ground of what? Pharmacovigilance. Suppose in case of certain uh, medicinal product which gives you know the adverse effect or adverse event are happening around then again they there are chances of 
you know providing data there are chances of withdrawal of that molecule also <coughs> you must have heard about nitrosamine impurity genotoxic impurities are generated uh, by many of the old product you might have heard about ranitidine and uh, one more product you know wherein they have banned and uh, elemental impurities so in such cases you know there are chances to withdraw the uh, product from the market or you have to again provide the clinical data which can prove that your product is safe still safe in the human that's why this pharmacovigilance system is very important to justify that your product is safe continuously you have to monitor continuously you have to submit your psur okay the safety update report dsur drug safety update report so <clears throat> under renewal the authorization may be renewed upon application by the marketing authorization holder at least 9 months before its expiry okay and in the case of mih does not submit the renewal application the ma will expire by law uh, this we have covered more or less under module 1, uh, what kind of documents goes, okay? Cover letter, renewal application, and all other documents, summary of product characteristic, information about export, risk management plan, okay? Module 2, again, quality oral summary. So... What is the takeaway from the entire presentation is what nowadays, you know, product life cycle management uh, becoming very popular, uh, you know, jobs in the industry. So these are the activities performed by regulatory people that, uh, you know, because lots of changes happening to your product, right? And one company has at least 500 to 1000 uh, product portfolio the bigger size company I'm talking about. So you can imagine how many uh, product licenses, how many uh, variations, how many uh, things, you know, you have to monitor, you have to make uh, uh, compilation, dossier, document, you know, everything goes around this post approval changes, life cycle management. Okay. So you have to have thorough understanding about the dossier requirement, then categorization of the variation, whether it falls under 1A, 1A in, 1B or 2, okay? So, and also what kind of impact it is going to happen with respect to quality, safety and efficacy. And you, you do you have ability to work on multiple assignment at the same time, correct? Then the effective strategy making, planning and prioritization are essential in your workflow. And effective coordination with the multiple cross-functional team is crucial within your organization because you have to coordinate with QC department, RA department, sorry, uh, R&D department, analytical development, QA. So you have to uh, closely work with management department also, like your BD person, portfolio team, supply chain, global project management. So you should have a uh, very good people management skill, effective communication skill, right? Because you are dealing with the health authority also, European health authorities, at the uh, same time, the internal stakeholder, QC, QA, R&D and all. So that is why people working under this product uh, life cycle management should have thorough knowledge about the subject, variation guidelines and entire European regulatory system of MRP, CP, DCP, uh, and uh, NP, that is National Procedure, okay? So with this, I have covered uh, entire, uh, you know, Europe. Like, uh, I, we have discussed about European regulatory system. We have discussed about ASMF filing. We have discussed about CP filing. Again, we have discussed how these generic applications are submitted. Uh, in CTD, uh, ECTD format like uh, ICHM4. And uh, today we have again recapped everything and we have shown the live submission also uh, in CTD, ECTD format uh, along with this variation also.
so thank you very much for your kind attention and we will stop here okay and we'll discuss if you have any question we will discuss thank you